Hey guys, and welcome back to Phantom Curiosities. Today's episode is about the true story behind the very famous Annabelle. If you haven't heard about this creepy doll that's been popping up in movie theaters, it's a possessed doll that actually comes from a real life story. And the doll in real life actually doesn't look like the one from the movie, but she resembles more of a yarn hair doll like Raggedy Ann. So today we're gonna to talk about what inspired the real life Annabelle. So the story of the real Annabelle doll from The Conjuring is more disturbing than the movie. The Annabelle doll that stars in the franchise is based on a real life Raggedy Ann said to have terrorized a pair of young nurses before killing a man. She sits in a glass case bearing hand carved inscriptions of the Lord's Prayer with a stitched smile resting under her red yarn dyed hair. But beneath her case is a postcard sized white sign which reads warning, positively do not open. To the uninformed, she seems like any other oversized Raggedy Ann doll produced in the early 20th century, but the animal doll is anything but so. She's been blamed for demonic possession and at least two near-death experiences. Indeed, the fascination around the sinister Annabelle doll has inspired a multi-million dollar franchise, but just how much of her haunted tale is believed? Is Annabelle doll already an inanimate vessel of a demonic spirit in search of a human host? Or is she simply a child's toy, used as a prop for a lifetime, wildly profitable ghost story? Though she doesn't share the same porcelain skin and lifelike features as her ceramic counterpart in the Annabelle movies that lives in Ed and Lorraine's in-home occult museum, is if anything made all the more creepy by her ordinary looks. Annabelle the doll's stitch features, including her half smile, a bright orangish red triangle nose, invoke memories of childhood toys in simpler times. If you were to ask Ed and Lorraine Warren, who if you don't know who they are, they are self-taught and self-professed demonologists, authors, and lecturers. Lorraine's supposed to be clairvoyant and a light trans medium who works closely with her husband, Ed. They founded the New England Society of Psychic Research and they are the oldest ghost hunting group in England. But Ed died in 2006 and Lorraine died in early 2019. They would tell you that the stark warnings scrawled across Annabelle's glass case were more than necessary. According to the famed demonologist couple, this doll is responsible for two near-death experiences, one fatal accident, and a string of demonic activities that spanned almost 30 years. The first of these infamous hauntings can allegedly be traced back in 1968 when Annabelle was brand new. The story was told that the Warrens were contacted by two young women and was retold for years after by the Warrens. As this story goes, the Annabelle doll had been gifted to a young nurse named Donna, or also known as Deirdre. It depends on the source you hear from. Her mother gifted her for her 28th birthday this doll. Donna apparently was thrilled with the gift, brought it back to her apartment that she shared with another young nurse named Angie. At first, the doll was an adorable accessory sitting on a sofa in their living room and greeted visitors with her colorful facade. But before long, the two young women began to notice that Annabelle seemed to move about the room on her own. Donna would leave her on the living room sofa before leaving for work only to come home in the afternoon and find her in the bedroom with the door shut. The roommates would often find notes left throughout the home reading, help me. According to the woman, the notes were written on a parchment paper, which the girls did not keep in their home. Furthermore, Angie's boyfriend, known only as Lou, was in the apartment one afternoon while Donna was out and heard rustling in her room as if someone had broken in. Upon inspection, he found no sign of forced entry, but found the Annabelle doll lying face down on the ground. Suddenly, he felt a searing pain on his chest and looked down to find bloody claw marks running across his body. Two days later, they had vanished without a trace. 
Following Lou's traumatic experience, the women invited a medium over to help solve their seemingly spiritual problem. The medium held a seance and told the women that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a deceased child named Annabelle, whose body had been found years earlier on the site where their apartment building had been built. The medium claimed that the spirit was benevolent and simply wanted to be loved and cared for. The two young nurses reportedly felt bad for the spirit and consented to allow her to take a permanent residence in the doll. As far as the Warrens were concerned, that was where the young nurses' trouble started. The Warrens believed that there was actually a demonic force in search of a human host within Annabelle and not a benevolent force. The Warrens' account of this case states that spirits do not possess inanimate objects like houses or toys. They possess people. An inhuman spirit can attach itself to a place or object and that is what occurred in the Annabelle case. The spirit manipulated the doll and created the illusion of it being alive in order to get recognition. Truly, the spirit was not looking to stay attached to the doll. It was looking to possess a human host. Be that as it may, the young nurses were yet unaware of the demon's intentions. In an attempt to rid their home of Annabelle doll spirit, they called on a priest known as Father Hegan. Hegan contacted his superior, a Father Cook, who alerted the Warrens. Immediately, the Warrens alleged to know what was happening. They noted all the signs of a demonic possession, including the teleportation of the doll moving on its own, the materialization of the parchment paper notes, and the mark of the beast loose clawed chest. The Warrens subsequently ordered an exorcism of the apartment to be performed by Father Cook. Then they took Annabelle out of the apartment and to her final resting place in the occult museum in hopes that her demonic reign would finally end. They would later claim that they were wrong. Following her removal from Donna and Angie's apartment, the Warrens noted several other paranormal experiences involving the doll. The first just minutes after they took it out of their possession. After the exorcism of the nurse's apartment, the Warrens buckled Annabelle into the backseat of their car and vowed not to take the highway in case she still has some kind of power over them. However, even the safer back rows proved too risky for the couple. On their way home, Lorraine claimed that the brakes either stalled or failed several times, resulting in near disastrous crashes. Lorraine claimed that as soon as Ed pulled holy water from his bag and doused the doll in it, the problem with the brakes disappeared. Upon arriving home, Ed and Lorraine placed the doll in Ed's study. There they reported that the doll levitated and moved about the house. Even when placed in the locked office in an outer building, the Warrens claimed that she would turn up later inside their home. The Warrens had specifically made glass and wood case constructed upon which they inscribed the Lord's Prayer and Michael's Prayer for the rest of his life. It would periodically say a binding prayer over the case, ensuring that the sinister spirit and the doll remained good and trapped. Since being locked up, Annabelle the doll hasn't moved again, though it is alleged that her spirit has found ways to reach out of the earthly plane. Once, a priest who was visiting the Warrens Museum picked up Annabelle and discounted her demonic abilities. Ed warned the priest about mocking Annabelle's demons, but the young priest laughed him off. On his way home, the priest was involved in a near-fatal car crash that totaled his brand new car. He claimed to have seen Annabelle in his rearview mirror just before the accident. Years later, another visitor rapped on the glass of the Annabelle doll case and laughed at how silly people were to believe in her. On his way home, he reportedly lost control of his motorcycle and crashed headlong into a tree. He was killed instantly and his girlfriend just barely survived. She claimed that at the time of the accident, the couple had been laughing about the Annabelle doll. Over the years, the Warrens continued to recount these tales as proof of Annabelle the doll's horrific powers, though none of these stories could be corroborated. The names of the young priests and the motorcyclists were even divulged. Neither Donna nor Angie, the two nurses who were Annabelle's first victims, ever came forward with their story. 
Neither Father Cook nor Father Hegan appeared to have mentioned their exorcisms of her ever again. It would appear that all we have is the Warren's word that any of these even took place. Whether or not any of these hauntings actually took place, the tales behind were all directed, produced by James Wan, needed to pull together a long-lasting and lucrative horror universe. Beginning in 2014, Wan wrote the story of Annabelle, a child-sized haunted porcelain doll with lifelike features and a need for violence, using the real-life Annabelle doll as inspiration. Of course, there were several distinctions between the Warren's doll and the cinematic creation. The most obvious difference of the doll itself was that while the real Annabelle is clearly a child's toy with exaggerated features and plush body parts, the movie version of Annabelle is 10 times creepier. It's inspired by a vintage handmade doll of porcelain, real braided hair, glistening glass eyes. It's clear why the artistic license was taken. Along with her physical features, Annabelle's antics were also amped up for shock value in the movies. Rather than terrorizing a pair of roommates and one boyfriend, the movie Annabelle from home to home attacks families, possessing satanic cults, killing children possessed as a nun, and causing chaos in the Warren's own home. Despite that the real Annabelle only has one alleged murder under her belt, Juan invented enough destruction for three movies. Though Ed and Lorraine Warren have both died, their legacy has been carried on by their daughter Judy and her husband Tony Spera. Until his death in 2006, Ed Warren considered Spera his demology protege and entrusted him with continuing his work which included caring for his occult artifacts. Those artifacts include the Annabelle doll and her protective case, a task Spera doesn't take lightly, echoing the warnings of his professors Spare cautions visitors to the Warren's in-home occult museum of Annabelle's powers. It's dangerous, he reports. It's the most dangerous object in this whole museum, he says. If you believe the stories of Annabelle the doll in spite of your common sense, remember the Warrens, though they became practically household names of their involvement with the Amityville horror case and those that inspired The Conjuring, the work has almost been entirely debunked. An investigation in New England Skeptical Society proved that the artifacts in the Warren Occult Museum were mostly fraudulent, citing doctored photos and exaggerated storytelling. To those who doubt that Annabelle the doll still has powers, in short, Annabelle and her supposed possession might simply be the work of some highly imaginative storytelling. But would you really risk it? Do you think this is real? And that is the story of the real life Annabelle doll that actually looks more like a Raggedy Ann creepy doll. Do you guys think this is real? Leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and what else you would like to see on this series, on this channel. Subscribe for more videos. I do videos every Monday and Friday here. I hope you guys enjoyed. Stay spooky. Do not get any nightmares. And I hope you guys have a great, great day. Love you creators. Bye.